Hi everybody, welcome to the Emory's Memories channel. I'm your announcer, Gary Beatty. This channel was created to feature interviews by Ralph Emory. There are over 125 interviews by Ralph for you to enjoy on this channel. This channel has also become a collection point for rare and in some cases never before seen shows and interviews. What you're about to see is one of 14 classic interviews hosted by the Lagarde Twins from Sydney, Australia. It's part of a TV series they created, and it's called Down Home, Down Under. Now, these interviews have remained in their private collection, and they've never aired on radio or television until now. Let's watch their one-on-one -on -one interview with Marty Stewart. Welcome back to the God Twins Down Home, Down Under. Now here's my brother Tom to tell you about our very special guest, Tom. There's a new breed and a, and a new wave in country music sweeping Nashville, Tennessee and actually sweeping the world. And isn't it wonderful to see these young men start at an early age being inspired by country music instead of switching over to rock and roll and making a new impact on country music. Making great inroads too, Tom. That's right. There's a young man who's really burning up the charts in the United States of America, and we're very happy to say that he'll be coming to Australia. And he'll be burning, hopefully, the charts up in Australia too, Tom. He's got a style all of his own. He's worked with some of the pros, so he has certainly paid his dues. He's a young fella, and we're grateful to have him on the show, Marty Stewart. Hello, Tom. Nice to Hi, see you, Marty. Hi, Marty. How are you? Fine, Marty. Good uh, to see you. The man in black. Yeah. How many Which years? one? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> no, how many years actually were you with Johnny Cash? Uh, I know that. I worked with Johnny Cash from uh, 1980 until 1986. And we, as a matter of fact, we toured Australia twice during that time. Did you like it? I loved it. I've, you know, I must confess, and with no offense to any other country besides the United States, of all the foreign travel I did, I liked Australia because it reminded me of America, you know, That's maybe right. 10 or 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the people are so down to earth. I mean, well, yeah. we, we say, you it's know, great. both countries were colonized by the British yeah. and both speak the English language. Right. But we notice that you folks have a slight accent. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the South, right? No. Well, what was the outlaw's name? Is it Ned? Ned, Ned Kelly. Kelly. Ned Kelly. I became a Ned Kelly fan while oh, I was you did? down there. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's yeah. great, Marty. And then you worked with another uh, great gentleman uh, that had a bluegrass uh, band, uh, Lester Flat. You know, it's like a Cinderella story. So many people come to town, to Nashville every day with hopes of, you know, starting and just getting a song cut or, you know, mm -hmm. getting to play guitar in somebody's band. I got a job when I was 13 years old with Lester Flat and got Good to start at the Grand Ole Opry. So I had to start at the top and work my way down and start all over again. So well, did you, did you play him? banjo? No, uh, I was a mandolin player and, and, you know, acoustic guitar player at the time. Mm -hmm. I, don't get to, I don't play banjo. I wish I did. Well, How many instruments hidden? do you play? I'm sorry, Ted. Oh, oh, two or three. Just whoever didn't show up in the <laughs> band that week. You talk about going to the bottom and starting and yeah. coming up the top. Well, you're headed right for the top because there's a lot of great things happening for Marty Stewart. And with your background, I know, and the experience that you've had, and your, uh, you have a wonderful personality, you're a great performer. People love you. It isn't going to be too long that Marty Stewart is going to be way up top. Well, thank you, Ted. You know what? I feel really fortunate that I got to start out and play with the people that kind of helped invent country music as we know it today. And Lester Flatt always taught me the basic rules of show business. And he always preached to build, as you guys know, build a foundation. That's you right. Know? So when the cold years come, there's somewhere to fall back into. And I've been on my own for a couple of years now in the States and it hasn't been, you know, very successful. But it's just now starting to catch on. But I've had a lot of good friends to go hang out and play with, you know. That's great. And uh, I'm really thankful for the foundation that I've had in those guys. You couldn't ask for better places to play than with Cash and the Flat and those kind of guys. Well, you'll be at, hopefully when you come to Australia, you'll be bringing your own show, Marty. You bet. And because I know the people down here in Australia will love you and the type of uh, performance that you give. Well, I love Australians, and that's, that's not a, I'm going to love them and hope they love me back. That's just real easy. Marty, how did you, uh, how did you go from, uh, were you ever a rock and roll fan, or what made you decide, uh, to, to, when you got to the crossroads, to say whether you were going to go into rock and roll or to go to country? 
Uh, my, my mom and dad were always big country music fans. We're from, we're from Mississippi originally. What part of Mississippi? Philadelphia, right. Mississippi. Route Philadel 8. Route 8. Right. Philadelphia, <laughs> Mississippi. They did a no, movie they... about our hometown called Mississippi Burning that wasn't very flattering, but yeah. there was an old incident that happened there. Uh, and uh, my uncle was a member of the Columbia Records Music Club. And the f it's ironic, the first two records that I ever had in my life was The Fabulous Sound of Johnny Cash and Flatten Scruggs' Greatest Hits. Isn't that something? And about the same time, I got an album called Meet the Beatles. But there was just something about country music and people like Luther Perkins playing and Johnny Cash's songs and Scruggs' banjo playing that just went straight to my heart. And, you know, I'm a country person. And you I think being raised in that area that you could relate more to country music than oh, you could to rock and roll? I think so. I mean, all of my... It was more meaningful to you, right? It was to me because I was raised on gospel and, you know, and country, with co gospel and country type people. And uh, the rock and roll people I, I understood and got along with. And there was a time in my career, uh, right after Lester died, I went out and toured with Bob Dylan. So, mm -hmm. And I thought I'm going to make some big rock and roll money fast and come back. <laughs> you know, but you know what brought me back was the fans. The country music fans. They they're kept, solid, aren't they? They're solid as a rock. Yeah, they're for And, you know, there are still people coming to see Charlie Pride and, and those kind of people I've noticed you've had on your show. They've been coming to see him for 20 years, whether he has a hit record or not. They're well, loyal you know, people. One, once you establish yourself, uh, particularly in foreign countries, and uh, once you get an Australian fan, you've got them for life, I'll guarantee you that. But you've got to do the work. You've got to make the effort and say, well, I'm going to go down there, uh, come down or whatever. You bet. And do a tour, meet the people, get the feel of the country and establish that and think, well, where will my career be 20 years from now? And that's I'm right. sure that you've assessed that. You know, there's a, there's, there were four or five people and please don't ask me to call their names, uh, <laughs> that I met in Australia. One was a photographer, great guy. And uh, I haven't been there in five or six years, but every Christmas I still get Christmas cards from them. And they seem like they're very loyal people. We'll be right back with more Lagarde Twins Down Home, Down Under with Marty Stewart. Don't go away. Uh, let me ask you this, Marty. Have, uh, were you able to bypass and... and the, the drug scene? There was a period in my life that uh, it was fashionable in the industry to do mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, being in my teens and being a youngster, uh, it just seemed like all my peers were kind of into it. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I noticed it destroys lives, it destroys homes. Yes. And uh, it, it takes your career away. And I'm in this thing for the long haul. So I, I, That's it, you see, longevity. You bet. Uh -huh. and so. I sat myself down and had a long talk with me and decided we were going to do things a little a bit long different. Long talk to yourself, right? You betcha. You. <laughs> you have a message for, for young people like yourself that's getting into the business? Uh... Well, there's always going to be a struggle. I mean, there comes a time that uh, the only person that believes in you and your craft is you. And you've got to have pretty thick skin because you're going to hear no a whole lot. Yes. Right. And if you know you were put here on earth to do what you mm -hmm. do and to entertain and God's blessed you with those gifts, mm -hmm. you, you know, don't ever look back. The second thing, probably stay away from my old manager. <laughs> you, and, you know, stay, stay with truthful people. And people be, that believe in you, right? And what in you're you. doing. And not that don't shine you. But, you, know, you want to see, most people, I think a lot of entertainers, Marty, they, uh, they most probably want to hear. Um, what they want to hear. What they want yeah. to hear. And, they, and sometimes, you know, our mother always said the truth sometimes hurts. Oh, it hurts. But you bad. know, it, sometimes it's best to hear the truth. Yeah. And I've been in it so long. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in a lick of smoke. I don't want any smoke blown at me, no matter what the truth is. Just let's, be let's honest, just right? Be, let's deal in the truth. Uh, an old vaudevillian told Ted and I many years ago, Marty, he said, to be in show business, you need the patience of Job, <laughs> you need the wisdom of Solomon, <laughs> and you need to hide like a rhinoceros. That's right. <laughs> you you got to, exactly right. And if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. But let me, what, what a direction. business, though, Tom. It's a great what? business. <laughs> What direction do you see as a young fella, you see country music uh, heading? Well, country music to me is always, it has uh, a couple. I'm a little bit confused because my heart and soul is really, really from the past. I'm a traditionalist. And yet I see where we, we have to blaze new trails into the future. Mm -hmm. But I see a future in the past. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, I really do believe my challenge is to make traditional country music fashionable for the future. Oh, uh, well, you yeah. do. You have a you have a uh, pioneering and a reckless heart to go out there and say, hey. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I don't consider my, I still consider myself a bit of an outsider sometimes, 
to the mainstream because mm -hmm. just because something's fashionable this year, you know, that, that doesn't always mean it's going to. Johnny Cash said a great thing. He said, you know, traditional country music, the, the pendulum always swings back to it. Uh huh. You know, As the tide time, goes you, out, you so can't get away from the grassroots, right? I don't have any desire it, to. It emerges from um, everyday experiences, from ordinary people. Folks. I've got to say, Marty, the, the very, very first time that uh, I saw you was uh, your video of Cry, Cry, Cry. And I, the second time I saw that, I said, there's a guy that's headed in the right direction. Man, he's got it all. He's got the looks. He's got the style. He's got the voice. And, nice and, personality. And all you right. have, apparently, you've got the burning <coughs> desire. And you're committed. You're involved. And you want to make it happen. Well, you know, there's a, uh, for the last couple of years, like I said, it's been a little thin. But I knew, that some, you know, I've been in it for 15, 16 years. I know that some seasons are better than others. Mm -hmm. And I sat down one day and said, I'm tired of this. I'm going to do something else. And then I decided I don't know how to do anything else, so I've got to stick it out. Marty, yeah. I know that you've, you've, you've crossed many valleys and hills, but up to this date in your career, what's been the highest mountain you've had to climb so far? Uh, there was a time in 86 I was on Columbia Records. And... As a lot of people know, when uh, in corporations, when one regime goes out and another comes in, a lot of artists, their careers fall That's down. Right. Mm -hmm. That and a marriage ended at the same time. Oh, mm. And oh, so I, I was it. sitting with one of my favorite people of all times, Merle Travis. Mm. And we were playing, oh, what a great... We were playing poker in Memphis, Tennessee one night. Uh -huh. he says, uh, and I was down to $10 and he knew it. And he took my, he beat me and he took my $10. He said, I'm going to sell you a piece of advice. He said, if you're going to be a hillbilly singer, he said, you're going to be in for a lot of ups and downs. He says, but I tell you what I want you to keep in mind. He says, after the tough times, he says, I want you to go out and get you a nudie suit, get you a good looking girl, find you a Cadillac and find you a song that makes you feel good and start singing it, get your guitar, and things are going to brighten up. <laughs> and that's it. Isn't that beautiful? What, 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 what optimism, life, eh? What the, yeah. And our, our business is based on that. You've got to have complete confidence oh, and, yeah. and, and a lot of faith. I mean, it's amazing that you can be in the mailroom one day and on top of the heap the next. I mean, that's... Isn't it a beautiful remember business? The, remember the old joke about the circus that came to town and... Uh, the reporter was out in a little local town taking down notes, and he saw this guy shoveling elephant manure. <laughs> yeah. And he goes up and he says, excuse me, sir, said, you look like a, he says, how old are you? The guy says, 29. He says, wow. He says, you're 29 years old. You're working with a circus. And he says, you're shoveling elephant manure for a living. He says, why don't you quit this and get a real job? And the guy says, what, and quit show business? <laughs> So that's kind of the way it is. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no business like show business. Oh, and you bet. either love it or you don't. And, and, and like this, there are some people are doctors, some are lawyers or whatever. And it's a profession that once it gets in your blood, I mean, it's something that you never want to let go of. That's why people like George Burns at 93 is still performing Bob Hope at 82. And the traditional people, I mean, uh, we, I know we've used the terminology before, but, but it's true. Uh, you'd stand in front of a fast-moving train hey. as long as you didn't get killed. Hey, let me tell you, the great ones, and uh, like Jerry Lee Lewis told me one night, he said, I tell you what, young'un, he said, give me a light bulb, a microphone, one piano key, and two people, and I'm going to put on a show. Uh, that's and, you show know, business. Hey, you that got, is that's show the business. way I look at it. Um, if you had uh, something that you'd want to tell the Australian people, because you've been down there before, is there uh, something while we're here together, Marty, that uh, you'd like to tell them? Uh, I'd, I'd say be yourselves. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let, uh, you know, time's going to change and generations are going to change. But the feeling that I felt, you know, when we first would get off airplanes and the people, we'd come through airports, the people would applaud us and they'd mm -hmm. hug our necks and shake our hands and... You go to cafes and pubs and whatever, and they'd make you feel like you could come to their house and hang out with. Here's them. one thing: uh, you you like to. I hope you like to sign autographs. Oh, I love. Uh, you know, it's part of it. You know, and it, it doesn't bother you if you're sitting in a cafe or a restaurant, anybody, no, and somebody comes up. Hey, Marty, that's can I the have ultimate you? form of flattery. And Good. Marty, who 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 selected the song "Cry, Cry, Cry"? I picked that one out because. Uh, I believe in paying my dues as I go, and one thing I want to do is tip my hat to old Johnny Cash. Did he write the, the song? Yeah, it was his first hit on Sun Records. Oh, is it right? And, so uh, it was a good omen, right? Yeah, and he and used to do it every now and then in his concerts, and 
I, you know, music, after all this time to me, it has to make me have fun or I don't care anything about playing it. Mm -hmm. You have fun making money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then uh, who, who actually, uh, then it started taking off, then who produced the video of Cry, uh, Cry, Cry? A lady named Joanne Gardner here in town. She has a fabulous video. She and Roseanne Cash, I believe, are partners in a company. Mm -hmm. A fellow named Stephen Buck directed it. And uh, we did it right here around the same complex that we're filming this in. And I called W.S. Holland. He's playing drums. He's been with Johnny Cash for 30 years and a friend of mine named Roy Husky. And I dedicated my album to W.S. Holland and Luther Perkins and a steel guitar player that used to play with Buck Owens named Ralph Mooney. What a beautiful it, thought. Ladies and gentlemen, we really do uh, appreciate you watching uh, Down Home, Down Under. We've been talking with a, a great young artist, Marty Stewart. What a great classic one-on-one -on -one interview with Ted and Tom, the Lagarde Twins. I want to tell you about their book, The Lagarde Twins, Showbiz Hustlers. Let me take you back to the beginning. These twin boys walk 15 miles across the bushlands of Australia to a tent with a dirt floor and folding chairs. As the projector started up, the movie appeared in black and white on the screen. And there, for the first time, they saw Hopalong Cassidy. They ran almost all the way home and told their mom, we're going to become cowboy singers. Let me read the introduction to Showbiz Hustlers. Being raised in the bushlands of Australia in the 1930s and 40s was a rough and hard life. We didn't think about it back then because that's how life was. You have to live the hard life to understand it. But we also made a picture in our minds of the kind of life we wanted to lead and it became a beacon that has guided us on our long journey in show business. We hope and pray that our book falls into the hands of our fellow strugglers and dreamers to give them unfailing encouragement to pursue their hopes and dreams. Above all else, we want to give God all the praise and glory for our long lives and for His mercy and grace in dealing with us throughout the years. So grab the reins and ride over one million miles with us from the bushlands of Australia across seven continents through 23 countries and 45 of the 50 states in America. Let's ride. Ted and Tom Lagarde. They appeared in Vegas, movies and TV shows. And for you Trekkies out there, get this. This book is packed with pictures and stories and is a must read. We'll put a link below the video so you can get your copy of The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers. The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers makes a great gift. This book is about twin brothers from Australia who had a dream and it came true. This is Gary Beatty and as Ted and Tom Lagarde would say, Good day, mate.